Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about NUMA remote memory access overhead related to in-memory technology. In-memory technology uses native code and native code has less instructions, machine instructions compared to our regular T-SQL. And here, the remote memory access overhead penalty could be very high. When you start SQL Server, SQL Server loads the in-memory data or in-memory table data during the start. And if you have two node architecture, the data is distributed across both nodes. Unlike our regular disk-based tables. With disk-based tables, when you start SQL Server, the data is not loaded. When you query the table, the data is loaded. And we saw in the previous video, you have to make sure that query distributes the data across all nodes. With in-memory technology, that problem is not there because when you start SQL Server, it loads the data and it distributes across all nodes. So it is efficient. The problem is only when you create a table. When you create a table, the table gets located in the node where the create table statement is running from. Let's look at an example. Here is a database that I create for our example. I already created this database. The database took 600 milliseconds to create. And then I created some tables. I set the memory to 24 gigabyte. I created a memory optimized table tab 72 and it took 37 seconds to create I just pre-created it and it has similar columns like our last example c1 integer not null c2 integer c3 character 400 but this table has 5 million rows so it will be around 2 gigabyte again and we have a primary key non-clustered hash c1 with bucket count the same as the number of rows in the table and we do not have an index on column C2. And here I show you which scheduler this query ran when we created the table. That is, it ran on scheduler 3. Scheduler 3 means CPU 3, and CPU 3 is on node 0. And let's look at the size of the table. The size of the table is around 2 gigabytes. So if we look at it here, how much memory is occupied in node 0, that is 3.8. This includes index and other data structures. Now we will execute the query from for this table. I created a stored procedure. You can see it here. I created a stored procedure called NCSP, Native Compiled Stored Procedure, tab 72. This basically selects C1 from tab 72, where C2 equal to 1000. And again, we do not have an index. It will do a table scan. So let's look at this query. It is going to execute on P1G1. If you remember from the last video, P1G1 is going to go against NUMA node 0. So when I execute this query, the data is in NUMA node 0. So the execution will be quite fast. Let's start this query. I'm executing 10 times. Start current. Let's see how long this takes. It takes around 810, 808 milliseconds. Fast execution can be slow. So we will do a one more attempt. Start current. Let's see. It takes around 998 or 90 six milliseconds for 10 iterations. The average is, sorry, 796 milliseconds. Now, let's change our workload group to P2G1. That is, we are going to node one to access this data. So we have to remember this is 796. Now we will execute this query. And there you will see it is taking quite a long time, 7 96. I will write down this number, 796. We seem to have this number already from the past example. And now let's look at this number. Let's run it again a second time so we don't have this warm-up problem. And you see here the time is 11.17 or 11. 
17. For 10 iterations, the average is 1118. And here we will change it to 1118. And that shows the remote memory access overhead for memory optimized table. Look at it. It's 40%, not like 19% that what we saw with the Windows and SQL Server. Since they are using native code, this is showing a huge difference in performance. How do you avoid this problem? First of all, we have a problem where the data is located on one node and all access from other nodes are going to pay the penalty and the performance becomes unpredictable, just like our SQL Server disk-based tables, but this is only during table creation. How do you avoid this problem? I suggest you create the table in batches. If you have two NUMA nodes, create part of the table in node 0 and part of the table in node 1. For example, here I am creating this table tab 72 in node 0 and node 1. I am creating 2.5 million rows from node 0 and the rest 2.5 million rows from node 1. Here I have a workload for this. Here workload 1 creates first drops this store procedure we created because it has a dependency and then it drops the table and it creates the table. Workload 2 inserts 2.5 million rows but it connects with default original database P1G1, so it's going through node 0. And the next workload is inserting 2.5 million rows, the other 2.5 million rows, but its database is P2G1, so it is going to use node 1. And finally, we do the update statistics. It doesn't matter which NUMA node we are in. So we go back here. And here I use a custom workload. If you say start all, it starts all the workload at the same time. Start current starts just the current workload. I say custom workload, which means it starts workload one, two, three, and then four. Let's start custom workload, and then let's monitor which data ends up in which NUMA node. Let's go to our data here. So we see first it's allocating space in NUMA node 0, NUMA node 0. Now it is allocating space in NUMA node 1. You know, SQL Server first allocated space in NUMA node 0, then it allocated space in NUMA node 1. So the data is now distributed across NUMA node. If you missed it, just rewind it, you will see the NUMA node 0 and 1, first there were increments in NUMA node 0, then there were increments in NUMA node 1. Let's summarize our findings. When SQL Server loads the data part of the startup, it loads the data evenly across all nodes when possible. The problem is only when you load data for the first time, because in in-memory technology, every query cannot use more than one thread. On the other hand, with in-memory technology, you shouldn't be doing these large scans, so this foreign memory access should not be an issue. But I would always recommend to distribute the data loading across all nodes so you have predictability in performance. The other possibility is if you want to eliminate this remote memory access overhead altogether, you can restrict your instance to a single NUMA node or use resource governor to affinitize your workload to certain NUMA nodes so you keep the data and access it from there so you do not pay this remote memory access overhead. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, send me an email at rmayapan at sqlworkshops.com. If you want to use the SQL test tool that I used in the demonstration, you can go to the sqltest.org website and click on download. There you will find SQL test installation program. And if you want to join our mailing list, you can go to sqlworkshops.com and there you can click on subscribe to our newsletter and if you want to attend one of our workshop you want to check out the agenda or the schedule 
you can do that here. And if you want to engage us for consulting, you can also contact us. Thanks for watching the video.